Hello, welcome to part one of a new video series on best practice sterile technique for Foley catheter insertion. First, full disclosure, I'm not a professional filmmaker, but I did embrace a new hobby making music videos during my recent pandemic shelter at home months. I'm a retired teacher and a C6, C7 quadriplegic paralyzed from the chest down with no function in my fingers. I'll be 70 years old in the spring of 2021. I've lived a long and healthy life, primarily because I was sent to an old school rehab center when I sustained a high spinal cord injury in 1975. Most of my paraplegic and quadriplegic peers never had the kind of training I had. Like me, they relied on catheters in order to relieve their bladders. But sadly, most of them died long ago primarily from complications brought on by using the non-sterile catheter technique that has been the new normal in nursing schools over the past 40-some years. There have been great improvements in catheter insertion products for intermittent catheter users, folks who insert a new catheter each time they need to urinate. But for the rest of us who insert a new Foley indwelling catheter every three to four weeks, I haven't found any touchless insertion products. Most of us rely on others to help us every time a new Foley catheter is inserted. If our caregivers haven't learned real sterile technique and they introduce new bacteria into our bladders each time, we experience two certain outcomes. One, we begin experiencing UTI, urinary tract infection, within 48 hours. And two, we steadily spiral up through the available antibiotics used to treat UTI. The third and fourth outcomes are pretty much certain, too. We experience nearly continuous low-grade fevers, and we die years, even decades, earlier. Privately and through home care services, I have hired and retrained over 100 LPNs and RNs in the past 44 years, and not one of them knew the clean side, dirty side sterile technique I was taught in rehab. Not even the RN whose day job was head nurse at a New York urology clinic. It all starts with understanding what a sterile field is and how caregivers put on their sterile gloves. I have watched dozens of well-meaning young nurses' YouTube videos teaching sterile techniques, sterile glove handling, and not one of them created an actual sterile field, the most basic step in sterile catheter insertion. This video is a throwback to the days when every nurse was taught how to do that correctly. One of my latest trainees is a very dedicated registered nurse here in Florida. And before she begins demonstrating the difference between old school sterile technique and the shorthand and short sighted approach she was taught in school, I want to tell you about a young man from New York who recently suffered a high spinal cord injury like mine. Let's honor his privacy and call him Reggie. At the time of his injury, Reggie was transported by ambulance to one of the most prestigious hospitals in the New York City area. I have been a visitor there, and the facility is state-of-the-art. The staff is everything you could hope for, unless, like Reggie, you're destined to be a long-term Foley indwelling catheter user. Even before Reggie was stabilized and sent home where his mother is currently acting as his caregiver, he fought frequent urinary tract infections. He is nearly a continuous antibiotic user. We've gently suggested to Reggie's mother that his being sick with frequent UTI is going to be a persistent and dangerous fact of life unless she adjusts her approach. But, unfortunately, any advice that counters what the doctors and nurses say is hard for a grieving parent to hear. During my first week in rehab, the lead nurse on my team said, My job is to teach you self-defense against all the well-meaning doctors and nurses you'll meet when you go home. They have not been thoroughly trained to help you survive spinal cord injury long term. They won't mean to kill you slowly, but if you let them, they will. Whether you're a nurse, a caregiver, a patient, or the parent of a patient, it costs you nothing to readjust your approach. Creating an actual sterile field like a surgical nurse does when laying out a surgeon's instruments 
takes little or no more time than being sloppy. If you truly want to do no harm, you'll see that learning about clean side, dirty side sterile technique can make a significant long-term difference in the life of every patient you work with. Before Ashley demonstrates the old school clean side, dirty side sterile technique for putting on sterile gloves, we want to emphasize several medical facts. First, a healthy person's bladder and urine are inherently sterile. In many cultures, one's own urine is actually used on cuts and scratches to prevent infection. In Costa Rica, for example, the jungle guides introduced tourists to the local bullet ants by telling them that there are three things that happen if you get bitten. You feel like you've been shot, you urinate involuntarily, and putting your own urine on the bite is usually the only thing that will keep you alive long enough to reach medical treatment. The second fact that relates to this video is that human sweat is basically urine, made of the same urea that cleanses our bodies of toxins and minerals. The third fact is that the sweat which perpetually oozes out of the pores of our fingers is never sterile. It is contaminated by everything we touch and by the never-ending slough of dead skin cells. Even seconds after washing our hands, touching a mirror is proof positive of how quickly sweat reinstates itself on our hands. Watch closely as Ashley shows you what you'll see on most videos about sterile gloves. If you've been to nursing school, you've probably seen it there too. First, the second she places her thumbs on the sterile flaps, she violates the purpose of those flaps. Then, by flattening out the paper with her bare hands, well, if that doesn't gross you out, it should. When we pretend that contaminating the two-inch border of a sterile field's clean side doesn't matter, or that the gloves will never touch any of those 90-plus square inches of invisible bacteria, we are deliberately gambling our comfortable fantasy against our patient's health. Let's start our better way demonstration with this piece of fancy typing paper. We'll call the white side the clean side and the fancy side the dirty side. The object of true sterile technique is to never place our sweaty, dead cell sloughing hands on any part of the clean side or sterile field we want to create. Every sterile glove kit is wrapped in sterile paper deliberately designed so that bare human hands never need to touch the clean side. For the first part of this demonstration, we've replaced the commercially folded sterile paper wrapping you'll find in every sterile glove set with this same fancy typing paper. We hope this helps you to see and recognize why the packaging is folded the way it is. Note that each of the first sections you must touch in order to unfold the wrapping are all the dirty side of our sterile field. When you can see the two clean side flaps, you are at the point where most nursing schools have changed procedure over the years. But watch as Ashley slides her thumbs and pointer fingers under the flaps, pushes her hands together, and pinches the dirty side of the paper by using her opposing fingers to bend the paper, making it easier to pinch. Sometimes a second gentle tug is usually enough to make both gloves accessible. To all you tidy folks out there, please resist the natural urge to flatten out the paper. Your need to be neat is not a good thing in this case. Now that you know better, we hope you'll learn to do better. Finally, Ashley will do it all again with a standard sterile glove kit. Thank you for watching our amateur and not-for-profit attempt to improve the medical world just a little. I'll shut up now and let you listen to more of Charlie Lang and Bar Scott singing Coming Around. The rain is gone My elbow's on the sill Thinking right out loud where are you now? Life goes on What did I think I'd see? Horizons bright But you're not here Yeah.
it right this time Then we'll finally know The second chances come 